we're here in Lawndale with uh, Mr. James Haynes, and uh, this is uh, February the 16th. Beautiful day, isn't it? Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Mr. Haynes, uh, Mr. Haynes, how, uh, when did, how old did you first born? I am 72, approaching 74. You grew up right here in this area? I grew up right here in this area, across the street where you see me, over where you see the, uh, Tree where you see the cedar tree, right there is where we moved in 1938. In 1941, we moved across the street over to the big house right here. And all those years I spent here, that's when the ideal dummy was coming up to that. That was more or less the, the heyday or the last days of it, anyway. The right? last days, I believe it uh, deceased in 44. 43, 44. 43, 44. And it, it ran. Right behind this building, where you see that truck right behind there, down by where this house is down, and they had a trussle right down the street there. Right? Yeah. And uh, went on down to the mill. And, went to the mill and unloaded the coal and loaded back and went back to Shelby. Nick Wells was one of the followers that was on it. I can remember him. You know, you knew Nick in those days? I knew Nick in them days. And I knew Otis Royster. Am I correct? When Otis Royster, he was, he was, uh, on the train at that time. It was Simon Ross. Simon Ross, it was somebody else uh, with him. What's your brother's name? Uh, Bill. Bill Wells, too. I remember them on the train. And the train, I was always afraid to try. Some of the young fellows used to catch the train and ride short pieces. The people that raised me was real strict and they didn't allow me to do that. I wanted to. But they didn't allow me to do it because they would beat my back. I bet you didn't get to swim in the river either. I didn't get to swim in. One time I went in the river and uh, it was kind of dangerous and we almost capsized the boat and I didn't go back. But the trussle is where I had the most trouble. When I tried to cross, cross the trussle at one time, I got about halfway. I got about halfway of the trussle. My vision gave out and I looked down and I wanted to get out. I had to crawl the rest of the way. I was walking at first, then I had to crawl the rest of the way, and that was really frightful. Did you ever ride the train just never to Never did, never, or never did. I was yeah. always afraid. Well, uh, can you remember where it turned around right down the road here, where the, the Y, what you call the Y? That was down here. Yeah, it's down uh, up from where the station is now. And uh, it went right behind those houses there, yeah. and across the, across the next road. And I guess you were real familiar with the track and the way it went. Yes, very familiar. Because the track always was on the, from here it was always on the left side of the road. It was never on the right. And uh, let's see, uh, did you, who else did you know that, that worked on the train? You mentioned Nick and his brother Bill. And Zone o Peeler. Zone Peeler and Otis Fall. Roy and later on, Roy Price, he didn't work for long, though. No, Maybe about part two time. years, part time, Roy Price did. And uh, this was back in the years, this may have been 40. At the same time, them two houses, not the last one here, the one before this, Juke Tyre lived there, and Mr. Eskridge lived in the, in the other one. Yes, and they were built in 1940 and 41. You probably knew Jack Eskridge, because apparently he and you went to school together, baby. Yes, well, I knew the Eskridge family, and then. Jude also. Jude Tyre, yeah. Joe, Joe and I used to play together every day. Every day we played yeah. together for many years. I don't see him anymore. Well, now Zone, was he one of the ones that was on the train when it got away? Yeah. He's the one riding the coke. Yeah. He must have jumped off, didn't he, Nick? Yeah, he swung off before he got to the full room. Yeah. And a few years ago, he was still living. Uh, he died maybe 10 years ago, yeah. 10 or 12 years ago he passed. Well, maybe it was Doc Sweezy I'm thinking. Doc Sweezy died this year. Did he? Yeah, Doc Sweezy. He, was, he used to work on it too. Doc Sweezy died maybe this year, four weeks ago maybe, maybe. a little longer than four weeks, maybe six weeks ago. And he was early, early in January. Right. Now, do you remember any of the crew that worked for Mr. Metcalf? Uh, his, uh, Jim McClee. Yeah, I remember them. Jim McClee. Yeah. Come on here, Nick. Yeah, come on in, Nick. Come on, uh, come on, come on up. Who, who else? What other names of the uh, crewmen? I know you told about Tommy Hunt. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy Hunt. He's McClee. only. Tommy's uh, only in one. Rachel McClee, Jim McClee. But they lived on his farm, didn't they? Yeah. They yeah. all lived on his farm. Okay. 
Mr. Haynes, did you visit down at uh, Metcalf's station, at uh, the store? Or? Every now and then, my dad would take me by there. That was a little gas station where they had gas pumps, mm -hmm. and they would pump the gas up, up in the pump, and you would get maybe a dollar's worth or two dollars worth. Cause wasn't a whole lot of money in circulation back in them days. Other than you all, you all had most ten of the money. Ten cents a gallon. Yeah, ten cents a gallon for gas. <laughs> well, and, and the. Uh, most of the money in this end wasn't, wasn't very, very much money. Did you ever, this community right here has been here a long time. Uh, I know, I think we asked you this before, but we found on some maps the name Humid. Did you ever hear anybody talk about a place called Humid or a post office? I, I don't know. You remember a post office in this area? It was a post office down by where, where the mill is now. Well, Until yeah, it moved. Sure. To, I, don't, I don't remember. This, this store that you run now, uh, this was the Whistler store right, for a long time. Right, That's what I remember. Right. Ruby and John Whistler was my white mom and dad. <laughs> they were, since childhood, they always cared a lot for me. And when I came, went to the service and come back, when they got ready to sell, somebody said, John and Ruby going to sell that place. I never figured I was, but I'd come and talk with them, and they let me have it. And I've been here 22 years. I've been here 22 years. Do you have any years. idea how long they were here? They were here 36 years. 36 years. And this store itself, this building, wasn't it moved from down at the mill? Part no. of it. Part of it was, yes. Part yeah. of it. Part One, of it. the back part of it was moved from down across where they got, from where the old bank used to be. From uh, They got a monument there now. So right. Okay, it was moved from there. And at that time, Costner owned Costner. it. Costner, yeah. Yeah, uh, Fitz. Not Fitz, Fitz. It might have been Fitz. Fitz, Costner, yeah, right? it was. He had it. He owned it. They moved it up here in the back. Uh-huh. And that was made, uh, Reuben John opened this 1947 R8. That must have been about, about right after they, they moved that part of it. Right. That's There's some pictures showing that. But see, and before this, this building here belonged to Cleet Mac. McIntyre. Cleet McIntyre. And they used to call it Cleet's Place. And he had gas, too. But I'm talking, this was long, right? This must have been 33, 34. What else do you remember about this area? I know there was the, the dry cleaner and there was uh, uh, the, the ice cream place over here. Right, that was in later years. But before then, it used to be a clinic here. A clinic? It used to be a clinic here. And then one time, this was a living room. What kind of clinic was it? Uh, you know, for Cleveland County, Upper Cleveland County, but they didn't call it that then. They just called it uh, the clinic for uh, the people to come that didn't have a whole lot of medical attention, and they would come here. Now, when about when was that? Oh, uh, 40, maybe 46, 47, like that. 46, 47, 48. Before the Whistler. Right, over. before the Whistler. The Whistler store come here in 48. They, they closed the clinic and moved it back to Shelby, I believe. Have I said that right? Yeah, I think so. Well, is there anything else uh, that you remember about uh, the, the train or Metcalf or some of the people uh, that you want to tell us about? Well, nothing really other than they all were some nice people, you know, like in them days, look like people got along better than they do these days, the days today, you know. Everybody was friendly and nice and all of them, I've always had a way with people and, you know, we've always got along good with people. Well, it must have been something to be uh, here and hear that train coming and see yeah. it go by. And yeah, it all be, that big black smoke. It would be a different place, yes. Well, we appreciate you talking to us today. Yeah, appreciate talking to you. you like go, go down in the morning and come back in the evening. Mm -hmm. Go down around between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning and come back in the evening. Between, if they got an early day, they would come back between 4 and 5 in the evening. That's fertilizer day. Yeah. yeah. Fertilizing cold, am I correct? Right. Well, that's right. Well, thank you very much. You're so very welcome. I did not want to do that, so we offered an opportunity to talk to the crew. But... <laughs> he's easy to talk to me. Yes, he yeah. is. <laughs> uh, he's a oh, yeah. Nice man. Yeah. Would you buy a used car from that man? Yeah. I did. He spotted my pickup, and he filmed how to hire for the little red pickup I used to have. Uh -huh. And he asked, he said, "Did like first chance I know?" I thought I kept in mind, but then I oh, gave it to Chuck. Oh, 
Are these houses? I don't think it comes this far out. I think it just comes down to the. That's one of the places we might want to add sometime on our own. Uh, is there depth? Well, yeah, because the store here. The. Uh, yep. Yeah. The, the uh, dry cleaners, the, yeah. uh, 